48 chefs from across the UK are putting their reputations on the line in a bid to become professional MasterChef champion. The next six hopefuls are competing to impress Judge Greg Wallace, renowned chef Monica Galletti, and Michelin starred Marcus Waring. To say I wasn't nervous would be an understatement, but I'm actually really excited to see what's going to happen today. It's not about experience, it's about talent, and I think I've got that, so bring it on. This is the most exciting thing I've ever done, apart from having children. <laughs> This is a massive opportunity for these six chefs. I can't wait to see what talent is about to walk through those doors. Right, we have got six chefs keen to show us their skill, their passion. Monica, what do you want them to do, please? I would like our chefs to braise an artichoke, serve it with a saffron aquafaba mayonnaise and a salad. What's a saffron aquafaba mayonnaise? It's a mayonnaise uh, made without any eggs. So in place of the eggs is the water from beans for chickpea water. Right, how long are you going to give them? I'm going to give them 20 minutes. OK, I'm going to learn something here. Show me, please. Firstly, just want to get the saffron sort of soaking so that, that the colour really runs through this and then I'm going to get on preparing the artichoke, because that takes a while to cook. Artichoke heart or the whole artichoke? The heart of the artichoke. You know, there's a lot to lose on here, so it's much easier for the knife to cut through if you remove the outer leaves. These are really tough. So you just keep peeling them off until you get to, to the lighter leaves. If they don't know what they're doing, they could be in danger of just chopping it down to absolutely nothing. Right, so now I'm going to use a spoon to remove the choke, which is the, the furry, spiky bit. All that choke's got to come out, hasn't it? Otherwise, you get a mouthful of hairy fibre. It's a fantastic skill. It's great to see a chef prep an artichoke. That's what I'm looking for, and this is everything that comes off the artichoke. Right, beautiful. So I've just boiled some water here. I'm going to drop a bit of vinegar. This is just to keep the artichoke from discolouring while it's cooking. So I've just dropped some thyme, some rosemary, just some flavour through the, the artichoke. I'm going to put a lid on. OK, and I'm going to leave that to cook. Anything from sort of five to seven minutes. I am going to make the mayonnaise now with, with the aquafaba. Yeah. Now this I need to see. In the bowl, I've got mustard, the saffron that's been soaking in the aquafaba liquid. I'm going to add a little bit more of the aquafaba to it and then whisk that up. That is thickening up like an egg yolk. That's remarkable. When you see it thicken, you start adding your oil. Well, the process is no different at all from using an egg. So if the chefs have made mayonnaise, they can make this. Yes, and you add all the oil in too quick, it'll just split. You know, if you, if you whisk it in too much, it won't bind. Okay, so I've just checked my artichoke. For me, it's cooked. I'm going to take it out to cool. If it's going in a salad, we don't want this artichoke being piping hot. So we've got some beautiful rocket salads, some radishes, carrots, there's olives. I'm going to use some of the chickpeas as well in mine. And I'm making a little pickling liquid, because uh, it's just nice to add a bit of pickle through this and we're ready to play. Okay, so I have my mayonnaise. Chickpeas and olives. Pickled carrots on here. Oh, that's really lovely. There we have it, my braised artichoke with aquafaba and saffron mayonnaise with a salad. Oh, Monica, that is just beautiful. Sounds simple, but it's a very, very difficult thing to get right. Well, let's see what they can do. First up is 25-year-old Louise, who works as a sous chef for a private catering company. 
The thing I love about being a chef is the buzz of the kitchen. I didn't like school. As soon as I started catering college, never looked back. My style of food is no messing around. It is literally the flavours, the simplicity, without making it too difficult so people don't know what it is. How do I feel about the skills test? Um, <laughs> nervous. I I'm not going to lie, but I'll give it a go. Louise, welcome. This is the skills test, OK? This is one of Monica's skills tests. Thank you. I would like you to prepare and braise the artichoke in front of you and serve it with a saffron aquafaba mayonnaise and a salad of your choice. You've yeah. got 20 minutes, all right? Yeah. Let's go. Oh, this is going to be fun. I've done this at my college. This was years ago as well. Oh, I don't know if I can do this. You are doing it. Yeah, but my nerves. So you're going to rip all the outer leaves off, then what are you going to do? And then I need to trim it down, take the inside out, hopefully get it cooked. So artichoke is prepped. What's next? So I'm going to go on to making my garnish. Radish, I might just slightly pickle, just to cut through. Obviously, you've got the artichokes, it's cooked in lemon. What happens if you can't get into a bottle? You Sorry. Give it, you give it to the strongest man at the table, <laughs> and then he passes it to the <laughs> next strongest man. <laughs> and then we just hand it to Monica. And then we give it to Monica. <laughs> 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 Did she open it? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you are halfway, so you've got ten minutes left. My head's going. Oh, I'm starting again. What happened to the last moment? Split. I've worked with aquafar before, I've never in a mine. You have three minutes left. How's that look? I'm not as sick as I want it to be, but I need to get something on to a plate. <sighs> right, all done? Yeah. In the nick of time. That wasn't easy. Preparation artichokes. The way you've prepped it, I understand it's been a while, so you've tried to prep it like a baby artichoke, so you've kept the, the stem on. No, you, you can't really eat those. You need to just snap it off. The mayonnaise was very close. So you were doing fine in the beginning. I just think, you know, you just got too flustered. Uh, your salad ran out of time, got scruffy. That's what we have here. Yeah. The artichoke tastes good. The mayonnaise could have had a little bit more body to it, but you knew that yourself. So I could talk about the food all day. I'd rather just say to you, just believe in yourself, Louise, please. OK. Thank you. I don't want to eat the stem. The heart is cooked perfectly and nicely seasoned. Louise, seriously, get yourself together, cos this is a really nice artichoke. You <laughs> need to get over these hurdles that you have with yourself. My head's in the game. Better be. I want to see what this next dish is. Thank you. Thank you. I got something on the plate, so I'm not completely distraught. I just... I think my nerves overcome me in that. That was just a little bit overwhelming. So I just want the signature now. I just want to smash it. Next is 22-year-old Exose, who is a chef de partie in a fine dining restaurant in Manchester city centre. I've been around all the sections. Currently, I'm running the pastry section, doing the pastry desserts. Life as a chef, really hard. <laughs> you have to love it. You have to have passion, otherwise it just won't work. Definitely think I can go a long way in this competition. I may be young and unexperienced, but I've got the drive, I've got the passion, and I'm going to show that. 
So the skills test is really intimidating because we don't know what it is until we walk through that door. So hopefully it's something I know. <laughs> Service. Right, I would like you to prepare and abraze the artichoke. Serve it with an aquafaba saffron mayonnaise and make a salad your choice. How does that sound to you? I've never seen that before. Um, You've never seen I've an artichoke? I've never seen. I've never prepped it before. OK, yeah. you need to eat the heart of it. You can't eat any of the, the outside. You will have 20 minutes. Let's do it. Let's go. Exorze, that's not a name I've ever heard before. Do, do you mind me asking you where it's from? So it's from uh, Congo. It means blessed, but <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's going to take a while to cook. Have you always wanted to be a chef? Uh, yeah, so from a young age in high school, the teachers were always like, oh, everyone try exhausted food and got me pumped up and then from there I just fell in love with cooking. You are halfway, which means you've got ten minutes left. I feel like that artichoke is ready. I don't think this part's edible. Right. So if it's not edible, I'm what should we do with it? Take it all off. There's loads of hairs. Yes. Yes. yes! yes! That completely all looks unedible. I think I was meant to do this before I uh, cooked it. You can still get it off if you're careful. I feel like it's still wrong. I'm going to drop it back into the... cooking? Cooking, yeah. I feel like I'm running out of time. I'm going to move on to the mayonnaise. You've got three minutes left, all right? Is it thickening? It's thickening. It's thicker. Serve half of it, because I'm not happy. Is that going to stand up? It's not going to stand up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so embarrassed. Are you done? I'm done. Well done. So the artichoke you've never prepared before. You've actually removed too much of the artichoke. Is the, this is all edible. The aquafaba mayonnaise, you're going about it the right way. But to get the colour and the saffron going through, you need to put it in in the beginning. Salad, not great, but I, I like the fact that, you know, you stuck at it and, and didn't give up. The artichoke is cooked and the mayonnaise is the right texture. We're just lacking flavour across both the mayo and the artichoke. I enjoyed the way you worked out what to do with the artichoke. It was a little bit like a puzzle for you, but you got there. You have to put a line underneath there, Exose, and come back in the signature round and really show us who you are, because I don't think this is you. Thank you, Exose. Off you go. Thank you. That was just a disaster, but keep my head up and smash their signature on. And hopefully they'll <laughs> change their minds about me. <laughs> Last to face Monica's skills test is 21-year-old Monty, a junior sous chef at a one Michelin star restaurant in Solihull. The style of food here is all British classical fine dining. The garden is a big part of the restaurant, so the first course on all menus is a garden-led dish. Working in the Mission Star Kitchen definitely has its pressures, but you definitely see the rewards. When you're seeing people's faces light up with the food, you hear all the good feedback, and there's nothing better than that, I don't think. I'm going to put everything into the competition that I can. As long as I'm working clean and tidy and keeping to their standards, I think I should be all right. Keep smiling. <laughs> Monty, 20 yeah. minutes. Prepare and cook the artichoke. Aquafaba, saffron mayonnaise, served in a salad. Let's go. Mm. 
Monty, tell me how you're going to prepare this artichoke. Just taking all the green off, uh, scoop out the middle, just cut it in half, start raising it. OK. So, what are we doing? Just going to get a seal on it, deglaze it with vinegar, a bit of mustard, lemon juice, a few herbs. You've had seven minutes. Right, so you've got 13 minutes left. Lovely. Quite a bit of time. OK. Tell me how you make the mayonnaise. I've started with the liquid from the chickpeas, so you're going to add oil till it thickens up, a little bit of saffron. Who at home knows you're here? My mum, my dad and my girlfriend. Have they given you any advice? Take my time, which I'm not doing. <laughs> <laughs> There's no time on the skills test. <laughs> You've got seven minutes left. All right. Lovely. So dressing is going to make from white wine vinegar, mustard, olive oil. Is your artichoke cooked? I think so. I'm just going to double check it now. Soft to touch. Right, Monty, let's get it plated up. Yeah. You done? Yes. You had a full minute left. Oh, well. <laughs> the preparation of your artichoke was really rough. There was a lot of waste on the artichoke. Making of a mayonnaise, you went about it the right way, but to found the addition of the oil is going too quick. But it's held. You've got some colour of the saffron through it. You know, and what I really like about the way you work is the constant tasting. It shows that you care. I want that artichoke cooked a little bit more. It's edible, but it's a little bit firm. I really like your flavours. Your, your mayonnaise is thick, it's well seasoned. And of course, with the olives, you've got a salty sharpness as well. Do you know what I think? You seem to have the technique. You're just a bit of a bull in a china shop. <laughs> Take a breath and slow down. The cooking of the artichoke, yes, it could have taken just a touch longer, but you've kept a beautiful colour. The mayonnaise could have had a little bit more body. It's too aerated, it's too light. Salad, a little bit overdressed. But you've got the right ideas, you've got the right understanding. Slow down. This plate shows promise. You really show that you could do this properly. <laughs> Let's see what you're all about the next round. I, I know how to do them, and I can do them a lot better than that, which is annoying. Ready for the next round. I'm sure what I can actually do. <laughs> Skills tests, Monica, we've had three chefs attempt yours. Marcus, what are you going to set them? I would like our chefs to cook us a chicken schnitzel Holstein. Chicken schnitzel, breaded chicken, right? That's right. What, what's the Holstein? It is a nice fried egg and the anchovy and caper butter that goes on top. Marcus, how long are you going to give them for this? 20 minutes. Fine, right. 20 minutes, schnitzel and Holstein, shall we? Yeah. So the first thing, I'd like our chefs to butcher the chicken down completely. All they need to use is just one breast. Very straightforward, it's like any other bird. Two legs, two wings, two breasts. And the carcass, we want them to do it nice and clean and tidy. Nice. So. OK, and now I'm going to take the breasts off. I think it's a great test to bring to the chefs. It shows a lot about them, you know, how they butcher a chicken, but also how they treat the other parts, which are perfectly usable, down to the carcass. Of course, the carcass into a bowl and is there, always used for stock. So. Even though this is not being used for the dish, this is also part of the skill. Do you know that took you a minute to completely dissect that chicken? Yep. Our chef should know how to take two legs and two breasts and two wings off a chicken carcass. I'd like to think so. So what I've done with this chicken breast, I've just removed the skin, which we don't need. I don't want this breaded like this. It needs to be nice and thin, and then we're going to pan it. Otherwise, the breast is fatter at one end and thin at the other. That won't work, will no. it? So, Let's gently bat it out. Mm. 
Mm. Have it. Mm. Nice and thin. So, panne, always in this order. Seasoned flour, egg wash, and then your breadcrumbs, and then onto your tray. Got it. Got it. Flour makes the egg stick to it, and the egg makes the breadcrumb stick to it. That's right. And there you go. Very good. So what we need to do now is to get the chicken into the pan. What our chefs need to be really careful about is that the chicken is cooked all the way through. They need to just get a little bit of colour onto the breadcrumbs, then turn it over, colour the second side. Then what I'm going to do is put some butter into the pan, onto a butter paper and into the oven. Now, that's a beautiful sight. The sauce is a brown butter sauce. And this is the Holstein. That's the one. So, butter sauce, as Marcus is making here, is a beautiful thing, but it's all about the, the controlling of the butter, cos it can burn. You can start to see the nutty colour coming out of the bottom. Is that a bernoise? Yes. Nut brown butter. Papers are in there. Drop in some chopped anchovies to the sauce. Lovely. Chopped parsley. Now's our egg. What we're going to do is we're going to pan fry uh, a duck egg. Yes. And as soon as this egg is cooked, we can bring the dish together. That schnitzel looks fantastic. Fried egg. <laughs> so there we have it, chicken schnitzel with Holstein garnish. That's a lovely dish. Marcus, I've seen how it should be done. Let's get our chefs in. Let's see how they get on. First to face Marcus's test is 32-year-old Rob, who has 17 years cooking experience. I'm currently a head chef at a Riverside pub. Nice, busy pub in the summer. We've got our own pizza oven. We've got an a la carte tapas. Traditional pub favourites. Being a chef is just passion. If you haven't got the passion for the food and everything, then there's no point. First impression is huge for me, because that is your main calling card. On the skills test, I'm not scared of it. I'm going to tackle it head on. Rob, this skills test was set by Marcus. OK. Rob, what I'd like you to do for us is to prepare the whole chicken and to cook and serve a chicken schnitzel Holstein. Have you heard of that dish? I know what a schnitzel is, but not the Holstein side. The Holstein part of it is a fried egg and a brown butter sauce with capers and anchovies. Right, that's fine. It's 20 minutes, Rob. Off you go. A lot of the meat we get is usually all cut down for us and everything, so we end up with the, all the parts coming already prepped for us at the moment where we are. So you've prepped your chicken now, so what's the next step? I'm going to panne it and have it start to shallow fry. So, what's a good schnitzel? It should be a nice golden brown. It should have a nice crispy texture to it when you bite into it. You're halfway, Rob. It's going OK, right? Yeah. I'm going to try and get the chicken in in the next two minutes into the oven just to finish off. Four minutes, Rob. Can we start to plate up? Yep. All done? Yep. Whew. Just in time. <laughs> I've got to pick up, Rob, on your butchery of the chicken. Yeah. Oof. You know the carcass is? Stock, yeah. It's flavour. Flavour, yeah. You know that. It does not go in the bin. You did the panne well, and you got a really nice colour on the chicken breast. The brown butter sauce, um, you need to get the butter brown before you start adding your ingredients. 
But you've got a good-looking dish up there, Rob. Thank you very much. I'm pleased you know how to pan eh? It's nice, it's crispy. The egg, I love how it's being cooked. The burnt butter sauce, the butter needs to be lovely and nutty before we add everything else to it. The way you did it, you just sort of stewed everything together. The dish tastes good. I mean, it's a crispy, nicely cooked chicken breast. It would taste better if that butter was brown. OK, <laughs> yeah. Rob, see you in the next round, right? Thank you very much. It was edible, they ate it, but it was just silly things. It's like butchering the chicken, and I just went in and hacked it, and then without even thinking, didn't put the carcass to the side to save it for stock. It's done. 40 year old Debbie is a private chef based in Cornwall. I grew up in a small town called Nysness in South Africa. I did have quite a foodie background. My dad used to like foraging and cooking outdoors or fresco dining. I think maybe that's why there's quite a lot of this going into my menus and into my style of working. I love being in the kitchen. I love creating. I'm very artistic. It's great working in a team of people. You always have lots of fun because you are a family, really, because you spend so much time together. Service, please. Debbie, I would like you to prepare the whole chicken and I'd like you to cook us a chicken snitzel, yep. Holstein, OK, which sure. is the brown butter sauce with a fried egg. Yep. All right. 20 minutes, Debbie. Off you go. <laughs> Debbie, do you butcher chicken often? Uh, yes, I do. You do? Yeah. How long have you been cooking for, Debbie? Professionally for roughly 16 years, I would say. Yeah, I've had a couple of gap years in between. It was to raise my children. I also worked with my husband's company. Um, we did plumbing and heating together, so... You worked as a plumber as well? I worked as a plumber. Debbie, you've prepped all the chicken, right? It took seven minutes. Yeah. You've got 13 minutes to do the rest. OK, thank you. Tell me how you're going to make this sauce. OK, so I'm just uh, making a little brown butter. I'm going to add the anchovy. I'm going to put the lemon in at the end and a bit of parsley so the sauce doesn't go too brown. You've got five minutes left. OK. How's it feel? It feels good. Time's up. Feeling all right? Yes, good. I asked you to butch down the chicken, which you did very, very, very well. You've cooked it very well. You've got everything in that sauce. The only thing I can pick up on, you didn't bat out the chicken before you breaded it. But I have to say, Debbie, that's a very good skills test. And it's very rare I say that. Well done. Thank you. That's magic, Debbie. <laughs> Your chicken is really moist. Your coating, very, very crispy. You've got a perfectly fried egg with egg yolk, rich egg yolk all over it, and a beautifully brown buttered sauce with the sharp, salty flavour of capers. Debbie? Butchered the chicken beautifully. I like how you respected the ingredients here on the table. These things are what we look at. Your schnitzel is beautiful and crunchy, beautifully seasoned, fabulous. Great job. Well done. Thank you. Debbie, absolutely delicious. Really, really good. I'm really looking forward to seeing you cook your next dish. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely ecstatic. That was amazing. It was really great. The judges' comments was really um, positive. 
so I hope I can keep it going. Last to face the skills test is 27-year-old head chef Ross from London. Currently head chef of a modern British restaurant cooking a small tasting plates menu. The food we're cooking here is all about sustainability. It's about farms of fork cookery. So we've raised our pigs, we've raised our cows. We've spent months and months waiting for vegetables to pop out of the ground. So through that process, we gain real respect for the ingredient and for the produce. This is going to be one of the most challenging things I've ever done, and I can't quite believe it's actually happening. Ross, I would like you to break down the chicken and serve us a chicken schnitzel Holstein. You've got 20 minutes. Off you go. Thank you. So what got you into cooking, Ross? I've always grown up around food. My mother used to bake with me when I was young, and my father was very much into fishing and hunting. I'd see pheasants hanging in the garage, or my dad would bring home fish, which he'd caught himself. How long have you been cooking for? 10 years. I got my first job when I was 19. You're halfway, you got 10 minutes. Thank you. Ross. Right, Ross, so you're going to get this done in time. You've got under five minutes, nearly four. What yes. have you got left to do? Uh, finish the cooking of my egg, finish my sauce and plates. Right. Done? Done. Butchery was very good. You went through the breadcrumb process the right way. And then you put it into your pan and sort of forgot about it. And then as soon as you turned it, it was burnt on one side. With your sauce, Ross, everything was at furious heat. What you don't want to do is boil and overcook the parsley, the capers and the anchovies. Your egg Unfortunately, it's broken and it's just a little bit brown and scorched underneath. Ross, I thought you got off to a really good start. Great butchery with the chicken. You know, the sauce is really salty, but you put a whole tin of anchovies <laughs> into it. So not a great result in the end, but you know what you're doing. You took your eye off the ball. The flesh of the chicken is absolutely lovely. Obviously, you've burnt one side of your breadcrumbs. It is a little salty. Big round coming up next. And I think you probably have a point to prove to yourself. I do. Ross, see you in the next round. Thank you, Chef. Thanks, Chef. Could have done better. Made a couple of silly mistakes. Obviously, it's always hard to hear um, constructive criticism, but I'll bounce back from it. I'll, I'll take what I've said on board and I'll move on to the next challenge. We had no disasters. Honestly, I think we've got a quality bunch here. I agree. There's a good start. There's some problems here and there, but that's normal in the skills test round. Uh, but we did have some success in here today and it was really good to see. I'm definitely looking forward to the next round. This is your signature dish round.
this is when you really want to stand out. Show us who you are. Show us some of that personality. I really am looking forward to seeing what you're going to create today. Your signature dish really does tell us who you are as a cook, and it's going to have to be good if you're going to get through to the next stage. You are going to have one hour and 15 minutes to prove yourself. At the end of that, three of you will go through to the next round. Three of you will go home. Let's see what you got. As a head chef, it's fantastic to get feedback from industry leaders. Criticism is going to be quite hard to take, but equally, any acclaim is going to feel amazing. Get hands on my nerves, calm down, breathe. What's your signature dish, Ross? I've got a lemon and pine curd with uh, black pepper, Italian meringue, cardamom sponge, pumpkin seed sherbet, and we've got a phyllo wafer. I'm cooking with ingredients I love and believe in. I like going out and foraging ingredients, so hence the pine and some of the wild herbs I'm garnishing with. Ross, why is it? I'm really passionate about pastry. I love the textures, the contrasts in, in colour, in temperature. Get one chance, so I've got to throw myself at it. There's a lot of different elements in this dessert, but I hope he manages to complete this dessert because I, for one, really like the sound of it. I love a lemon curd. But the last thing you want is a lemon curd that hasn't cooked through. It's runny. Really love the lemon curd, the pine fir cream, berries, herbs, phyllo wafer, pumpkin seed, sherbet. It's going to be an intriguing dish, and I can't wait to see what it looks like and what it's going to taste like. After my performance in the skills test, I need to keep a grip on my nerves. I need to start thinking that I can do this. I know I can do it. If I get this dish right, I'm going to own it. I know I can do it, and I I'm going to do it. So, Louise, have you calmed down? Yes. I took everything you said on board. It's given me more motivation to come in here and just deliver. So what's your dish? Pan-fried cod with a seaweed and puff pastry crumb, white pickled muscat grapes. Then I've got pea puree, pick peas, pick broad beans, soused fennel, and a pea foam and a white wine fish sauce. Why this dish, Louise? Because it'll please people. It is a well-rounded, beautiful dish. It's about flavours, it's about the way it looks on the plate. That's all I like to do with my food. Cod is a meaty fish, cooked well. It's absolutely delicious. The flavours that she's putting with the cod are all very light and delicate. It'll be puree smooth, the fish sauce is about solid cookery, great skills, and Louise just wants to show us that. 20 minutes gone, chefs. 20 minutes gone. I think this just shows my quirkiness side. I'm hoping to take my take on junk food and pull it in front of the judges as a dish that they'd serve in their restaurant. Hopefully, I'll get the full marks and the ticks from them on all the flavours and the textures. So what's your signature dish? So I'm doing a southern fried coated quail leg. So I've got a corn panna cotta setting. I'm doing a charred corn and I'm doing a corn puree with potato fritters with an American ranch dressing. Where does the inspiration come from? So it's basically my take on a comfort food, a little bit different with the quail. I've practised it 11 times now, so... This is your 11th or 12th? This is the 12th time in just this week just gone. So I've been doing it nearly day and night. Good luck to you. Cheers, thank, thank you very you. much. Rob is doing a quail leg dish, and I've got to say, there's no meat or hardly any meat on a quail's leg. Why is he not using the breast of the quail? Rob is making a corn panna cotta. He needs to make sure that he's got the quantity of cream, the puree just right. Definitely piqued my interest. It's all going to be down to how the quail legs are cooked. They're very small. If they're dried out, it's going to be unpleasant to eat. So I'm curious how this is going to turn out. Competition so far has been a great experience. I think I did really well with my first test. I am definitely going to try my best to set my ball right up there all the way through. Very excited. How are you doing, Debbie? Good, feeling very positive. What are you cooking? A cake dish with a clam sauce and make a sweet pickle with an artichoke. <laughs> 
and then I'm doing lots of foraged ingredients with it. Some crispy sika, which I'm going to deep fry. The kale berries as a garnish. Amazing. So why this dish? I think it represents me as a person to the tea, basically, because I love working with fish. I do lots of foraging. I love using local produce. I'm very determined. I think I, sh I should stand a good chance if everything comes together perfectly. Hake, very similar to cod. You want it to be soft, beautifully coloured on the outside, and melt in the mouth. Clam sauce, which uh, she's finishing with some cream. I want to taste the clams through this sauce as well. I don't know a chef that isn't competitive, and I just want to show what I could do. Yeah, this dish is everything about me. It's, everything's fresh, lovely piece of meat, lovely sauce. And then, yeah, it's just going to be a really good plate of food. Monty, what's your dish? Rump of lamb with Jersey Royal potatoes, used curd, make a little fricassee with peas, lamb bacon. I'm going to finish it with a lamb jus and a lettuce dressed with malt vinegar gel. Malt vinegar, set it with agar to make it a nice smooth gel. That's the sharpness you would otherwise get with mint, right? Like a yeah, mint sauce? Yeah, like a mint sauce, yeah. Way! Do you get a chance to put your own dishes on the menu where you work? Yeah, quite a lot of time, yeah. We do a special thing on a Thursday where we just reinvent dishes and uh, blind, it's called Blind Five. You come in and have five courses for 45 quid. Has this been part of the Blind Five menu? <laughs> yeah, this has been put on the Blind Five menu. Has it? And it went down a treat. <laughs> the cooking of the lamb needs to be perfect. The sauce needs to have great flavour and a lovely balance of just a touch of lamb fat running through it. Monty has a gel, which is making a flavage and a bit of malt vinegar, which I love. Pea puree, nice and smooth. Bacon and pea fricassee. It's something that sounds delicious. What I've done in that first round was complete opposite of who I am, so hopefully they'll see that. I've uh, practiced this dish many times before. There's been a, t a few times when I've messed up. <laughs> Today is not going to be that day. I'm hoping all three of them clear the plate. I want to see an empty plate. Chef, what are they? So these are my shoe buns for my signature dish today. They're massive! <laughs> what are you going to fill them with? <laughs> so we've got fresh raspberries inside, lemon verbena creme patissiere, we've got lemon curd, we've got a raspberry puree, we've got a raspberry meringue. Why this dish? So uh, lemon and raspberry is one of my favourite combinations, so I just wanted to put myself on a plate. Do this very well, please. Hopefully, I will. The key thing here is the shoe pastry crunchy on the outside, and of course, it's nice and soft on the inside. Are we going to be able to identify creme patissier, the lemon curd, the raspberry puree, the raspberry meringue, and I'm not sure how they're going to sit once they've been piped inside the shoe bun. I'm a little bit concerned about the textures. You have three minutes, chefs, please. Three minutes. That's it, stop! Time's up. Louise has cooked pan-fried cod with seaweed crumb, white balsamic grapes, peas, broad beans, and fennel, served with a white fish sauce, pea foam, and a pea puree. The cod is beautifully cooked. Really love the flavours of this dish. The sharpness through the fennel, and then it cuts through the sweetness of the grapes. The fish sauce is wonderful when you can get it, but there's not enough of it uh, to really enjoy. Your fish is flaky, got a lovely crust on the top, and it's well seasoned. Love that creamy, sweet pea puree. It's a very, very tasty dish. I feel it lacks a little bit of refinement in its appearance. All your vegetable cookery is just right, absolutely on point. But the little stars on the plate for me are the grapes. They've got just the right amount of balsamic white vinegar going through it, so really good. And they do bring a lovely, fresh tinge to this dish that I thoroughly enjoyed. So well done, you. Thank you. I just wanted to deliver good food today. I just wanted to show them really nice flavours and just a beautiful plate of food. And that's all the comments I just got.
I'm buzzing. <laughs> I'm so happy. Next is Debbie. She's cooked pan-seared hake with clams, pickled Jerusalem artichoke, sea kale, and kale berries, finished with a clam sauce. That is one crowded bowl. The fish is cooked beautifully, just flakes away. The clams are delicious. The sauce is creamy, but the flavour of the clam has been wiped out by the amount of cream. You have nicely cooked fish. I like the sweetness of the clams. And those little sea cow berries are like a crunchier, fresher pea. I really like the Jerusalem artichokes that's got that little bit of sweetness to it. The sea cow that you fried is a bitter, bitter flavour. All of those things are fine. They're difficult to discern on your palate because there's a lot going on. I think we're getting muddled. I like your ideas and I, like, I love the way you've cooked everything, but I think you've just tried to cram too much into this plate, Debbie, and unfortunately I feel that everything's fighting against each other in a very small bowl. Slightly deflated. My dish was supposed to look good and I think I just put way too much on the plate. I need to refine it a bit better. Monty has cooked a rump of lamb, lettuce dressed with malt vinegar gel, chai flowers, Jersey Royals, yuzu curd, a lamb bacon and pea fricassee, and a pea puree, finished with a lamb jus. That lamb is rare when the fat is rendering down, leaving a beautiful, salty lamb flavour. I love the almost smoky saltiness of your lamb bacon and the sweetness of peas. I love the malt gel. That is the sharpness of malt vinegar. But I love your flavours. I love your flavours. I like your lamb cookery. I like the pea puree. I love the little use of Jersey Royals that sit underneath the dish. And the fresh idea and the tanginess of the gel, it's a delight, and you haven't done the norm. You've done something a little different, Monty. The lamb is beautifully cooked. It's pink, it's how I would order it. Nice, light lamb sauce with the used curd. It's beautiful, it has a sharpness that goes with it. And the lettuce just brings a freshness to it. So I think it's a great plate, Monty. I'm ecstatic, yeah, I'm feeling really good. Everything, they seem really happy with the dish, and so am I. <laughs> Rob's made spicy southern fried coated quail legs with thyme potato fritters, textures of sweet corn, charred sweet corn, sweet corn panna cotta, and a sweet corn gel with a ranch dressing. Your quail is nicely cooked, but I don't want that seasoning with the quail. I, I think the quail is too delicate a meat to do that to. Quail, which has a crispiness to it, I like. The quail underneath is moist, it hasn't dried out. The sweet corn panna cotta, you can taste the sweet corn, but it's not got the beautiful smoothness that I'm expecting. Potato fritter, it's just heavy in potato. <laughs> I don't like that either. The quail itself, I can taste a little bit of curry there, but that's, that's about it. Your charred sweet corn lacks sweetness. Your panna cotta is grainy. It's not refined, Rob. A little bit deflated. Obviously, I tried something different. I went a bit quirky, and it was definitely going to split the crowd. Not my day today, unfortunately. Exose has cooked a shoe bun dusted with raspberry powder, topped with a brandy snap, fresh raspberries, raspberry puree, lemon curd, meringue, and lemon segments. Excelse, I love how this dessert looks. You're just so curious about what's inside of this massive shoe. Mm. Fancy, Excelse. 
It's filled with raspberry Italian meringue, lemon verbena, creme patissiere, lemon curd, and fresh raspberries. I'm really enjoying it. I, I love the flavors of the raspberries, the lemon curd. The shoe bun has got a wonderful texture. And then, of course, with the brandy snap uh, as well on top. Yeah, I, I've really enjoyed it. I really like the fineness of your massive shoe bun. Lemon curd inside, beautiful. And I love the raspberry flavor. The addition of the meringue as well is just making it too sweet and too wet. I love the flavour of the lemon verbena and the lemon and the raspberry running through the dish. It looks good. For me, it's just missing a different type of texture because everything is soft. But it is enjoyable. I think it tells us a lot about you. You're creative, you're different, and you think out of the box. It felt amazing cooking my own food. And to get that feedback as well, I just want to keep doing it and keep doing it. <laughs> Last up is Ross. He's made a dessert of lemon and pine curd with a black pepper Italian meringue. Gooseberries, strawberries, cardamom sponge, phyllo wafers, and a pumpkin seed sherbet. I love your lemon flavoured with that pine. It's really refreshing. A little bit of pepper across the meringue. I love the seed sherbet, because that's real sweetness. But when you get the seeds, you get a little bit of savoury oil. Maybe I would like another texture, something to hang all the softness on. The strawberry is delicious, and I do like the gooseberries. They've got lovely sharpness to them. The sponge, it's nice, and I like the fern running in the dish as well. But I think if I was eating it at a restaurant, I'd actually say, what is it? The curd has beautiful lemon flavour through it. The sweetness of the meringue, and then at the end, there's just that hint of pepper. I like that. There's things I like, but as you eat it as a whole, it's not a complete dessert. I think they felt that it wasn't quite a complete dish. I'd have liked to get that spot on, but as a whole, very happy with the feedback. I thought it was very positive, uh, and I was very happy with the dish. I knew it. I knew it in the skills test that we had real talent here. Some fabulous eating today, and it's going to be quite hard to split them all up. Well, there's one chef here who didn't have a good day at all, and that was Rob. The quail dish, I got what he was saying. He wanted to have fun, but there was nothing refined about that dish. It's a shame. I, I just didn't enjoy Rob's, Rob's quail dish at all. The other five? I think there was one chef I really liked. Monty's dish, I thought the lamb was beautifully cooked, but the surprise of the lettuce with the gel running through it was excellent. I thought he did great. We got a plate of food that was very tasty. I thought Monty's lamb was excellent. Monty goes through. Debbie had a really good skills test, the best skills test. However, her signature dish disappointed me because it was muddled. I thought the hake was cooked nicely, but I found the sauce a bit flat. It was a bit too creamy. It lost the flavour of the clams. There's some interesting ingredients that she used today. I just didn't enjoy the dish as much as I wanted to. Slightly worried, but I hope I've done enough now to put me through to the next round. Exose. I loved the look of his dessert. It was a little bit wet for me and maybe a little bit too sweet. The idea of using the shoe bon was very clever. It was different. For me, Exercise impressed me with his dessert. If I went home today, I'll just be absolutely gutted. Hopefully, I'll get through. Louise really struggled with my skill test, and I'm pleased that she saw it through because her signature dish showed a bit more about who she is as a chef. It lacked a little refinement in its look, but it didn't lack any refinement on the palate. There was no mega surprises with the dish, but it was full of lots of flavour. I'd really like to get further and just keep proving that I can do it, because I know that I can now. I had a little bit of a wobble this morning, and I feel like I've just come back fighting. Now, what about Ross? His dessert 
leaves me undecided. It was difficult to see it as a main a la carte style dessert, one dish on a plate, what is it? But it's full of interesting, intriguing things for me. I'm sort of undecided as well, guys, because there were things which I find interesting uh, with Ross's dessert. I think I've still got more in the tank. I gave it my everything, but for sure, if I, if I come back, I've got more to give and I can, I can go again. We only have three places to give. Just three are going to go through. That was a real fabulous cook-off. We've made our decision, and the first chef going through is Monty. Congratulations. Yes, well done. <laughs> Thank you very much. The second chef that is going through is... Louise. <laughs> Thank you. And the third and final chef going through is... Exoze. Congratulations. Ross. Rob, Debbie, thank you, thank thank you, you so much. Gutted, devastated. But I gave a good shot, and the calibre of the competition was brilliant. So, well done to those guys. They were fantastic. I'm disappointed because I felt like I had more to show. But obviously, with the dish that I did, it kind of split straight down the middle. You just got to pick yourself up. Absolutely gutted, because I didn't want to be one of the best ones to go out. But saying that, I've had a great day. It's been really good. Well done, you three. It's a fabulous round, fantastic cooking. You three are called a finalist. Over the moon, like, that was a really, really close one. I'm looking forward to what the judges are going to set us next, but I'm really nervous at the same time, <laughs> really scared, but bring it on. I'm feeling completely ecstatic. That was an incredible experience. I did what I came here to do and really proud of myself. I am buzzing. I'm so happy. I can't believe it. I'm literally in shock. I want to ring my mum. I want to tell her. I think she might cry. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might cry. <laughs> Next time, six more professionals compete for a place in the quarterfinal. Whoa! Disaster. I think there's a really tasty plate of food there. That was absolutely delicious.